Kids should be seen and not heard. Right, we've heard that. That attitude is so passe. Young people are finally being viewed by adults as we need their youth voice. We, we want their ideas. They have perspectives about the future that we don't possess as older people. So youth voice is the new mindset. And now you have mayors who will create youth advisory councils to get input from young people on how we might improve the mass transit system or what are we doing with relations with police or the summer jobs program. We have school boards who will hold student forums to try to get more input, not just from the best and the brightest students, but what are students struggling with in their schools, restorative justice, all these other issues that are concerning young people, but rarely are they invited into that arena. Not enough. So there is a movement afoot to try to generate more of these ideas and really get action on them. But the problem is youth voice fails usually to generate problems that move into action. We have a problem of young people who may start a, a proposal in their junior year of high school and just, you know, they move on, they get busy, whatever. Many ideas are unrealistic or unworkable, right? But that's true with any, any invention, any business, whatever. The real problem, though, is a lot of decision makers, school board members, city council members, etc. They pay attention because they want to hear the ideas from young people, but they tend not to pay as much attention to you because of your age. Why is that? Well, one reason is politicians need to get elected. So they tend to pay more attention to people who turn out to vote. Who are they? They tend to be old people, senior citizens, older voters, because they are reliably going to come out. They take, pay a lot of attention to people who give them money for their campaigns. They don't pay attention to 18 to 25-year-olds. Why? Because the majority of these young voters do not turn out to vote. So it's like, why bother? Because they're not going to pay attention to me, et cetera, et cetera. And then if you're under 18, you're not eligible to vote. So we'll wait until you grow up and get old and all of that stuff. There is a move to move from youth voice to youth vote, because youth voice too often falls on deaf ears. So the movement that is happening by students around the country is being endorsed by some bigwigs. Like there's Dr. Lawrence Steinberg. He is the leading expert on the teenage brain. And he says, you know, we know some young people get involved with, you know, drinking and driving and reckless behaviors and all that. He says this is tied to hot cognition, but that voting is not an impulsive act. In fact, a 16-year-old, he says, possesses enough cold cognition to gather and analyze information as well as any adult. And he says it is time, we know so much more about the brain, the adolescent brain, it is time to lower the vote. It's been since 1971. So there are some lessons from around the world in Austria. For the last 10 years, 16 and 17 year olds have voted. What's happened? They are turning out at much higher levels than the 18 to 25 year olds. In Scotland, they recently had a referendum on whether or not to separate from the UK and become independent. They allowed 16 and 17 year olds to vote. Once again, 75% of 16 and 17 year olds turned out to vote much higher than the next age group. And they voted independently from their parents, often the idea that they're gonna be influenced by their parents. It turns out 18 is a lousy age to begin to vote. It is the year of intense transition. And if you've just moved, if it's a boring election, if there are no candidates that are interesting, 18-year-olds may not vote until their mid-20s or may not get in the habit. And so at 16, 
that is the time to start that habit. So in only in two cities in the United States, in Maryland, have they allowed young people, 16 and 17 year olds, to vote just in local municipal elections. This is where budget decisions get made about rec centers and swimming pools and all those issues that affect young people directly. So the trend is happening. And in Berkeley, California, some students said, you know, we love our student representatives who are on the school board. We think that's great, but we really want to, to be able to vote for every board member as students because, as Amanda Ripley says, she's the author of the brightest kids in the world, she says, students are the most valuable but the least consulted education policy experts in America. And the school board in Berkeley, California said, you know, we really feel it's okay if they vote us in or, in or out of office. We need more student input. And with that endorsement, seven out of 10 voters in Berkeley said yes, and now it is the law, one of the few school boards in the country where students themselves the experts behind the desk who have all kinds of different ideas and perspectives are there being able to vote. In San Francisco, a, another effort has been going on now. They have tried three times to lower the vote to 16, not only for school board members, but also for mayor, for the board of supervisors, and other key city officials. And they are not giving up. They were so well organized, this last attempt, where they had a marathon three-hour hearing. A hundred students testified. And one student said, I, I really feel if I can vote, I'm going to get my parents to vote. There's going to be a trickle up. And another student said, my father's incarcerated and he can't vote, and I feel I really need to do what is best for my country, for my family, and I need to be able to vote. They knew that they didn't have the public support, so they held teach-ins, students organized debates. There are plenty of pros and cons on this issue, but a lot of it was let's get youth civic engagement going at an earlier age. They created a crowdfunding campaign so that they could raise money to pay stipends to high school students, to do door knocking, and to organize phone banking and canvassing. Well, on election day, November 8, 2016, a quarter of a million votes cast. It lost by 11,000 votes. It got 48% and it needed 50%. And guess what? These young activists are trying again for the year 2020. This is all about persistence. And these young people and activists who are working on other issues, they are using their research skills, all of their advocacy and organizing skills, and they're doing real world stuff. So when we talk about apathy, often it, it, it feels to mock leadership. This is real world stuff. And when young people get defeated or ignored, the best time is when they come back and they don't give up. And in the case of Vote 16, this is, these are efforts happening in small cities in New, New Jersey to New Mexico. And so one of the exciting things is letting younger people step up to the mantle and be treated seriously so that they are seen and heard and listened to and respected. There is no minimum age for leadership. And if you want to join this movement to lower the vote, or if you want to put your passion into action for some other cause you care deeply about, remember this. If you think you're too small to make a difference, you've never been in bed with a mosquito. Thank you.